Hey, welcome everybody to the Daily Space Weather. I'm your host, Dan, a.k.a. smash o mash Today we're going to be talking about coronal hole fast plasma, which is what's causing geomagnetic unrest conditions and storms, magnetism, and bar galaxies. Oh my. Now we're looking at a large plage. What? Large, tell them large Marge sent you. No, we're talking about a large plage, which is not a sunspot, but it's got a whole lot of activity associated with it. A lot of magnetism, filamentary behavior, and coronal mass ejections have been flying. Not to mention a very well-defined coronal hole. There's still a bunch of plasma in between the sun and the earth, which still could eject at any time. Let's analyze it. Here's what's been going on in the past about one day. And we see more Earth-facing coronal mass ejecta here as we see ejecta on both sides of the C3. An indication that some is most likely headed our way once again. So expect geomagnetic unrest conditions to continue here uh, for the next two or three days, actually. And it's it's just... uh, it's exacerbated by lots of electrons and coronal mass ejections, coronal hole wind streams, rather. Yeah, coronal hole wind streams. And most of that ejecta looked like it was going south when I looked at it from Stereo A, but from Lasco, it looks like most of it's missing to the east. So, in any case, there are a lot of protons out there. Here's the view from Stereo A, and we can see, again, we see ejecta. Okay, some is, some is Earth-facing, so how do you like that? Yeah, you can see some of it is headed right down the pike below this horizontal arrow. Well, I'll be. Well, and also there is still some more plasma out there, too. And despite no sunspots, quite a bit of activity, so... Here's what's going on with the fields, and you can see these two significantly north and south pole-oriented portions of this plage. Not a sunspot, but a significant area of activity. There's 304 angstroms. There's the latest. And there's a great view of that in 171 angstroms. Pardon the draw times. There we go. Great view of that. A lot of filamentary behavior to, to be able to, to view here. A great opportunity for ultra high res images. Here's just the northern hemisphere in 304 angstroms. And I think we've captured a spaceship, folks. Stop the presses. Oh my god. Wow, that is actually a very, very straight. Check it out. That's uh, allow me to vanish. Check that out. It's like perfectly straight, it looks like. Let's see if we can. Where'd it come from, folks? Where'd it come from? Pretty interesting. Could have been part of a coronal mass ejection there. Keep in mind, things are moving at very, very high speeds when they start to eject. And here's that same area, 171 angstroms. By the way, if you hear that low rumble, that would be 
the Smash Bunker. And let me just check the life of the stream here and see if we have any chats. By the way, if you do leave a chat, we will be able to respond to it and we will show it on the screen. So again, here's the 171 Angstrom's Helio Viewer movie. A great close-up of that plage. Plage, synonymous with a sandy beach. It means a sandy beach, folks, but it's also a place with activity but not a sunspot, and it has to do with the three-dimensional nature of the... It looks like an oasis in a desert, sort of, right? It represents a, a concave portion of the... Uh, the chromosphere. 10.7 centimeter radio flux, still at 70 solar flux units. Expect this to rise in the near future. And welcome to cycle 25. There's the sunspot number progression and the radio flux progression through the last cycle, cycle 24. Welcome to September also and the neo renaissance indeed. And we see two moments of geomagnetic storm, and indeed we did our video yesterday during the geomagnetic storm, this earlier one. Back into geomagnetic unrest conditions there now. Not a lot of solar flaring happening, and no major proton strikes to date. Next we'll go to the real-time solar wind, and we see the solar wind density ramping down here. And the solar wind speed ramping up, so we're getting a very high-speed solar wind. And that's what's kicked us into geomagnetic unrest conditions, all the way up to 623 kilometers a second there. Now drop down a little bit. This may remain well into the 500s all day here. Because this is like a series of coronal hole wind streams within coronal hole wind streams. And that northern hemisphere coronal hole was extremely is extremely well defined. We'll probably show it at the end in 193 angstroms. Current solar wind speed 584 kilometers a second. And a shifty phi angle NBTBZ. So to give you some idea what's going on, we like to bring up this animation and allow me to return. We've got this ISWA view, and I kind of like it as it shows coronal hole magnetic field lines. It shows the B field in green. It shows closed potential field force lines in pink, as you see in the north solar polar region. And open potential field force lines in black. Please do not fall over while trying to look at this. And here's what's going on in the magnetosphere, and it's quite a bit of pressure there. It's all because of high-speed solar wind. And you're going to see the magnetism is going to continue to be all over the place. The magnetometer is going to be very sawtoothed over the next at least three days. And uh, that coronal hole wind speed is, is, uh, is the main culprit here, but there's also coronal mass ejections and very high electron content. So there's a lot of incentive for a lot of uh, chemical reactions to be going on out there. <clears throat> a lot of incentive. Here's what's going on in ground magnetic perturbations. We're not even going to show the poles today, as you can pretty much infer what's going on. And typically around the equinoxes, we do tend to see pulses coming out of the South Pacific here. We covered it last summer as well. So there's what's going on as far as ground-based magnetometers. Here's what's going on with the auroras. We see some being kicked off there. Nearly down to the, down to the Canada U.S. border, practically. significant aura there, I mean significant oval there in the southern hemisphere. Not a lot of people hanging out 
on Antarctica right now as only a few people overwinter at Antarctica. If you'd like to overwinter at Antarctica, make sure you can shovel snow. It's crucial. If you're able to shovel snow, you can survive. If not, you'll die. If your back gets thrown out, you'll have to get airlifted out and get another person to replace you. <clears throat> That's how extreme the snow is. Anyway, still lots of power outages here. Jeez. Significant percentage of Custies in four different states. And we were going to show you this geoelectric model here, but it's a little bit broken down right now. Hopefully that'll be back soon. Goes magnetometer, like I said yesterday, would be very sawtooth, and you can see it's all over the place here. And for new viewers, these N's and M's, they mean noon and midnight time for the satellite. Hopefully that helps you. The GOES-16 measures the electron flux. I mean measures the magnet. The GOES magnetometers endeavor to measure the magnetic field at the F2 ionosphere layer. Next, looking at the, uh, <clears throat> the Gong 2 magnetic data, and we are right in the moment of a current sheet polarity crossing as the south pole current sheet is about to pull through. So within the next 12 hours, if I had to guess, I would say sooner than that, we'll be back in the south pole current sheet shown here in red. And <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty current data. And that plage would, co would contribute to the south solar polar field charging up the portion of the current sheet in which the Earth lies. Here's a line of sight field plot. And by the way, we did a smash light segment today. B field is pretty unperturbed there. We did a smash light segment today, and uh, that was actually a separate video. So we're not going to cover any of that material. Check that out. It's going to be airing at, well, I'm not sure when it's going to be airing. It's actually going to be airing at 5, but this will be airing after it. <laughs> so in any case, if you don't follow us at BitChute, subscribe over there. Check out smashamash.com slash forum. There are forums about cosmology, earth and geophysics, general science, the sun, and a free-for-all. Up to 1,450 users. Thanks, everybody, for signing up over there. We're streaming right now live on Twitch. And we've been doing that regularly because the platform's so good. We're also on YouTube. Please press like and subscribe over there. Visit our links, etc. Visit the links in the description below the video as well. And let's talk about COVID. Oh my goodness, godness, graciousness. Now you, you COVID type dude, you, you just, you, you scamp, you. <laughs> uh, now Dr. Fauci told me to wear goggles. So I, I'm just going to leave you there. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, that's my new hairdo. I'm wearing the COVID for the rest of the broadcast. By the way, if you're not familiar with the, with HIPAA, it's the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996. It's the reason why you can't legally force me to divulge any medical information, which is the reason you can't legally force me to wear or not wear a mask, and why you can't legally do anything about my decision to wear or not wear a mask. You can throw me out of your store. You can refuse me service or entry uh, and if you require masks, I will require alternatives, and I will try to go to a different store if possible. Anyway, there's a very long forum thread, which is over 31 pages long, at smashamash.com slash forum about coronavirus. If you want to read all about it, check it out. Let's go to cosmology, as this is a spaced out video. And um, I'm not feeling very spaced out. But I may, I may look pretty spaced out. I, this is my Corona Fro. So we hope you enjoy the Corona Fro. It is, by the way, made in China. Made in China. If you were wondering, it's 100% made in China. The Corona Fro is. Anyway, let's move on to cosmology. Were you aware that bar galaxies have a tendency to 
affect the spiral arms and vice versa and change their rotation and act like a solid unit when the bar is lined up with the spiral arms. It's pretty interesting. And it makes it very deceptive about the size of the bars. It makes the bars look larger. And it all has to do with the particle blasting capabilities of the cores of galaxies, I would assume. But in any case, interesting article here on SciTech Daily about it. As it seems to affect the rotation, because as I've stated, I don't know, 1400 times, the galactic cores interact with the outskirts of the galaxy via the spiral arms. This is an indication that I was correct. If you'd like to read about it, it's probably on phys.org. This one's from a SciTech Daily. Is there a black hole in the cold heart of the Phoenix? Oh my god, a black hole. Well, there's some sort of massive radio source there, as there are jets. Now, of course, the Earth has jets. The Sun has jets. Every planet has jets at its poloidal regions. And it turns out the Phoenix Galaxy has jets. And here you can see one is slightly more oriented toward the observer than the other, I think. So, uh, I'm not surprised, but yeah, there's a, there's a phys.org article about it if you want to read that. How about a carbon monoxide encased galaxy? I mean, you know, different metals. Different metals are very interesting, right? Well, we see a very interesting molecular outflow identified in the galaxy NGC 1482. There's a whole lot of carbon monoxide floating around out there. So it's essentially what you'd call a high metallicity galaxy. As in astronomy, we refer to anything besides anything more massive on the periodic table than helium. So only hydrogen and helium are considered non-metals. Everything from lithium on up is considered metals in astronomy. And it has to do with the theories about how heavy elements form. But we won't get into that on today's episode. But So this is an interesting one in that there's a lot of carbon monoxide in the molecular outflow. So that's, uh, that's interesting. Um, by the way, that's not looking like a Markland convection feature in, in any way. However, yeah, so it's an edge-on disk, which means we're able to get a good view of the perpendicular flow. And the carbon monoxide must have come from somewhere because that's quite massive. Molecular outflow. So this, I don't know why they didn't look at other emission spectra, why they were only looking at a very tight group of emission spectra there. And don't get me started on, quote, star formation, end quote. So micro lensing, also in a phys.org article here. And this is another one over a period of time, uh, watching the lensing change its nature a little bit. Variable radiation and dust obscurement. Now, of course, many, many wonder if it's actually gravity causing the lensing. Um, but here's an interesting one showing the lensing. So. The lensing sort of phases as you pan across the target, uh, making it look very much like a lens in that it's rounded. But then again, the cores of all galaxies are rounded too. And I'm not sure any of this disproves the Faraday effect as a result of magnetic fields and gas and dust. But in any case, another indication of lensing for sure as it pans across the target. So that's a uh, always interesting. And let's talk about sympathetic filaments. Another article on phys.org. So we got tons of cosmology articles today. 
and apparently there is some way to uh, there's a pattern to sympathetic filaments so and of course this has to do with polarity this is the reason why we see more flaring on a beta class solar flare than on an alpha class solar flare because if you have two areas with enough of a magnetic field to create umbrae as well as opposite fields you will get sympathetic filaments so that's basically what we're talking about here um, I don't know what else I really had to say about that. I don't think anything. But it's caused by things like magnetic flux cancellation and reconnection. And that sort of causes electrons to flow very, very fast around those areas. And we wonder if Neil deGrasse Tyson knows where all those electrons come from. Now today we're going to talk about a featured item, and we're going to zoom way in. And I apologize in advance if you hear a squeaky mouse, but I'm going to zoom way, way in. Check it out. Where is it? It's the Cygnus arm. And what are we zooming in on? Well, it's going to look boxy. Is it looking boxy? It's looking boxy to me. It's the area around Cygnus A, massive Safer 2 galaxy radio lobe galaxy Cygnus A. It's our featured object of the day. Here's an image of it from Wikipedia, and these are massive radio jets. So the interesting thing about Cygnus A is that it's the second strongest radio source in the entire sky. Second only to, any guesses? Any guesses? What the strongest radio source in the sky is? Anybody? Bueller? It's the sun. This thing's 530 million light years away, estimated distance. Yeah, Cygnus A, that's our, that's our featured object today. And here are the X-ray transients from Cygnus A. They're right in their normal baseline. It's a pretty consistent X-ray source, not a particularly powerful X-ray source. Zero and zero, right in its normal range. If you want to follow your favorite objects, head to the Neil Gorel Swift Observatory. If you want to talk cosmic rays, let's talk cosmic rays. I haven't covered it for a while. Let me just make sure the stream is good, and we are good. I'll blast through some cosmic ray data. Here's the Apatity Neutron Monitor. And we see a downtrend over the past 30 days. Here is the Barentsburg Neutron Monitor. About flat over the past 30 days there. Athens is next, and we are streaming live. Bear with me for a moment while we allow these to load. Pretty flat over the past 30 days at Athens. Mexico City. Pretty flat over the past 30 days, considering uh, this few-day period here. We had pretty high levels of cosmic ray flux in Mexico. And next, Olu and DOMC Antarctica. There's Olu, Finland. Slight down took over the past 30 days there, and there's DOMC Antarctica. Notice a similar spike here at the same time we saw one at Mexico City. So that's always interesting. Again, if you want to follow this stuff yourself, follow it yourself. Don't take my word for it. And by the way, those transients can be found at the Neil Gorel Swift Observatory. There we go. You want to look up bat transient light curves, and there you go. The Swift Bat X-ray transient monitor. Just hit Control F, type in your favorite object, whether it's, I don't know, Sagittarius A star. And there you go. There are the X-ray transients from Sagittarius A star, the massive radio source at the core of the Milky Way galaxy. If you haven't checked out smashamash.org yet, we've got all of our links there. Thanks, Smash Staff. Please give Smash Staff a raise by becoming a patron. Visit our links. Pick up some merch. Join the Smash team. If you'd like a 3C405 shirt, got it right there. There's that boxy area we are showing you on the Simbad. And, of course, the radio image. That would be very, very zoomed in. That's not to scale. We are all over social media. Also, Facebook, Mines, 
Gab. We're trying to put up more exclusive content in all locations. I actually have been tweeting, believe it or not. We're on Instagram as well. Thanks to the true sources of funding, we are on Subscribestar and on Patreon. And shout out to our patrons. Here is your credit crawl. Consider becoming a patron. Get your name in lights. Again, Patreon is the true source of funding for the content. And we've got nine different tiers there. Uh, we've been doing things like dropping ringtones and other audio stuff for the higher tiers. If you'd like to drop us a tip of 1 to 15 bucks per month, patreon.com slash smashomash. And thanks again to all of our patrons. Again, we did a Smash Lights segment separately, so make sure you check that out if you haven't. Check out our playlist also, youtube.com slash smashamash slash playlists. We're in an electron storm region here. We're getting big, big, rapid, wild swings in the electron flux. Here's the one-year graph. And here is the three-day graph. So we've gone into electro electron storm territory, and the forecast is for even higher levels than this. In fact, the levels that they're forecasting are crazy. I think they might have messed up their scale on the relativistic electron forecast. But in any case, you can see very all over the place with the electron flux here. Surprisingly high considering how high the solar wind speed and density have been over the past couple days. The visualization's not working for the, for the total electron content forecast. So I can't really show you that. There's a relativistic electron forecast. and. NASA NOAA is forecasting it to go right off the scale. And uh, I don't necessarily disagree, as there are so many protons out there. I just think this is going to take a little while longer. This isn't going to happen for about three days yet, in my opinion. Let's look at one slice of the atmosphere. It's the ionosphere layer. Now, we've changed this from previous coverage, folks. Now we're showing a whole day. And this is showing you one hour per second. We'll let this do a full run. And then we'll bring up the latest image. I would note, for you new viewers, especially the South Atlantic anomaly, the ionosphere always acts weird in that spot. It's just the way it is. And we're open to theories as to why. Anyway, here's the latest image. That's 8.15 universal time. Let me check the life of the stream. We are good. Please leave us a comment if you've got questions, concerns, critiques, advice, whatever. And next looking at theplanetstoday.com. Here's your planetary diagram. There's where things will be in a week. And I always like to know what's going on above my head. I like to use in-the-sky.org. I'm not paid to say that. You can even advance the star chart. Good times. If you want to know when Venus will rise, for instance. We've seen some large earthquakes, as we more or less forecasted. Uh, and there may be more to come as we're seeing a drought in eight and nine magnitude quakes as well. So here's a nearly seven magnitude quake. This one taking place just off the coast of Chile there near the Parque National Park, I guess. I'm not gonna try to say those words, but there's a location of it. Let's look at the uh, last 24 hours. And we see a bunch of aftershocks there, no surprise there. There is also a six magnitude quake in the Indian Ocean. Six plus magnitude, I don't remember exactly. Let me scroll up the list. Looks like a new Madrid quake there, a small one as well. It's the Chagos Archipelago region in the Indian Ocean. Almost due south of the tip of India there, 6.2 magnitude. 
there's a deep quake on mainland India. Here's a deep quake at the Fiji Islands, it's a 4.3 magnitude, 350 kilometers depth. I wouldn't consider the earthquake risk complete, folks. Here's that 6.8 that happened at 4 o'clock this morning. So only a few hours ago, 6.8 magnitude quake at Chile. And I'm sure we'll see plenty of aftershocks there, and indeed we do. Looks like it's a fairly unpopulated area, folks, and quite mountainous as well. Next, look at a volcano discovery. Looks like a bit of a lull in volcanoes, and we seem to see this regularly here. We see a lull in volcanoes and an uptick in earthquakes at the same time. Explosive activity at Tucono is producing a 7,000-foot ash plume, 15,000-foot ash plume at Fuego, 19,000-foot ash plume at Sangue, and 24,000-foot ash plume at Sabancaya. Please don't attempt a back handspring over any of the caldera. Now, I brought up uh, the total accumulated precipitation forecast here. This is the GFS, and they're forecasting some very, very heavy rains in Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. You can see getting into the around 14-inch mark, possibly there, around the Oklahoma-Arkansas border. And that's by September 4th at 6 universal time, 6 o'clock UT, or Zulu if you prefer. Here's a weather.gov map. And here's me going, I'm not mad about it. I'm not mad. But there's some tropical storm, or some flash flood warnings? That must be tropical storm warnings. And there you can see those flood warnings. Big time flood warnings and severe thunderstorm also. Let's look at some more weather stuff here as the pressure map will allow this to advance. This is the GFS forecast once again, folks. You can see that powerful low moving over central Texas there. Here's where things will be around 1 p.m. my time. Please leave a comment if you're drinking a Mai Tai. Or if it's 1 p.m. your time. Major thunder. So that's striking right as we make the video here, folks. Right on the border there. Oklahoma City, you should have an amazing light show once again. Also Tulsa, also, also Tulsa. Yeah, say also Tulsa 10 times real fast. Good luck. Lightningmaps.org, you can actually forecast thunder there. Freak out your foes and impress your friends. Hey, Euro and African viewers, here are your water vapor maps. That's two hours and 30 minutes worth. Hey, Far Eastern and Oceania viewers, viewers of Oceania, here's a four hour water vapor map for y'all. I don't know if I'm authorized to say y'all or not. How about a water vapor map complete with a Borg sphere? Oh my God, it's a Borg sphere. Maybe it's hiding from all the coronal mass ejections within the Earth's magnetosphere. Pardon the sarcasm. And you can see some of those tropical systems there in the Atlantic, one south of Cuba, one sort of just in the middle of nowhere there. Sort of one, there's actually one north of Hispaniola and one farther north from that, as well as one right off the coast of Cape Hatteras. And let me just check the stream here before we show more weather stuff. Here's the U.S. Doppler radar map. And those storms look like they're moving fairly fast there. Let's see if we can forecast if they'll continue to move fast. Could be some dry air mixed in there. Let's take a look. Oh my god. We killed the water vapor map. And we've got a Borg sphere descending on the area. And let's zoom in on that. 
doesn't look like that dry air is going to hold this up very much. Looks like it's going to stay pretty high speed. Although there is moisture trailing it, so you're probably going to get additional indeed. You can see some rapid cloud nucleation right in here. Anyway, hopefully that gives you some idea of the storm track if you are in those regions. Let's bring up the full animation once again and blow it up full size. Anyway, there's the full animation for all of you US viewers. Here are the jet streams. And they are all over the place, folks. All over the place. I mean, the Northern Hemisphere, we have some coherent ones. And here's the Eastern world. Now that we showed you the Western world, there's the East. Allow me to vanish. We got a couple more slides for you here. And allow me to put that out too. Hey, Smash Team, thanks for tuning in. Remember, share on your social media, etc. We greatly appreciate your viewership, leaving comments, etc. Thanks to everybody who purchased merch from the affiliate links from the Smash O and Smash Store, etc. Thanks for flying American Smashways. Please get keep please keep your head and your arms inside the Smash Plane at all times. Shout out to Nick DiPaolo and Rich Wood. Remember, please keep your head and arms inside the Smash Plane at all times. We're going to show you the 193 Angstroms, 48-hour SDO video, the intensity gram to show you zero sunspots, most likely. Although the magnetic environment can suddenly change with no warning. There's the colorized magnetogram. I don't see any sunspots. What say you? Here's the intensity gram, just refreshed. I see no dark umbrae. And here's the 193 Angstroms video. It's 48 hours. Expect to be in the South Pole aligned current sheet soon. You can see some ejecta associated with that active plage. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, stare at the sun, don't drink it. If you do, don't drive. Please don't drive. And since it'll never be now again, may that solar wind be at your back and that COVID is the absent from your hood.